Okay, so this guy, Brian Keen, um, let me just bring up a picture of him real quick. He's like a real author. This guy's like a real author. He's written books and shit. Uh, he's a best-selling, multi-award-winning writer of horror, fantasy, crime, nonfiction, and comic books. He also serves on the Scares That Care charity board of directors. He has 5,000 subscribers on Substack. And his last article on Substack, Letters from the Labyrinth, is about Patrick S. Tomlinson. He writes... Good morning. I am Brian Keen, and this is Letters from the Labyrinth, a long-running weekly email newsletter for fans, friends, and family. And this is Patrick S. Tomlinson. Patrick is an Airbnb host, a failed stand-up comedian, and a mid-list science fiction writer whose career is in decline. He first came to my attention a year or so ago when some friends who are prominent science fiction writers, editors, and publishers, and who I won't name here because they wish to avoid his nonsense, mentioned him to me. Patrick alleges that he is being, quote, targeted by a cyber criminal death cult and is in fear for his life and the lives of his family members and has been swatted over 50 times. Swatting, for those not familiar with the term, involves bad actors placing a bogus emergency services call targeting their victim in order to provoke a police response. I myself was the target of a swatting event about four years ago. Someone from Canada called my local emergency services and said I was armed and threatening to harm myself. Our police know that I am a that I own several registered firearms. I am friendly with several of them, but a call is a call. At the time, I was driving home from a nearby convenience store to pick up cat food. Mary called me, upset. The police were there in full tactical gear. The sergeant, sergeant instructed me to pull into the driveway and obey the commands. As I neared the house, I saw that they had set up a staging area. I pulled into the driveway with my window down and kept both my hands clearly visible. When they instructed me to exit the vehicle, I did. When they detained me and checked over me, I let them. And when it was over, I was cleared. They explained what had happened. I do not blame our local police department for this. They have no choice but to respond to emergency calls. To expect them not to respond to an emergency call is lunacy. Was it unnerving? Of course. You try having a phalanx of heavily armed police officers at your home and tell me that you're not a little unnerved. But imagine if I had been black. <laughs> He didn't capitalize that B. It's black now, boy. Or lived in an urban setting rather than rural Pennsylvania. Or if you want an example from the other side of the spectrum, imagine if I had been old, don't, tr- big old, don't tread on me flag flying outside of my house. Imagine just how horribly wrong it could have gone in any of those situations. To be clear, Patrick S. Tomlinson has certainly been swatted. There are video evidence of at least one such altercation in which Patrick, whose name I'm going to shorten to Rick from here on out. If you don't know, Rick is like a meme name. um, And of course, it requires me to play this. (laughs) No! My name's not Rick! Um... This is something that indicates that this writer is a little bit familiar with Pat posting. <laughs> um, uh, with Patrick, whose name I want to shorten to Rick from here on out just to avoid tapping Patrick continually, is belligerent with the responding officers and appears to take a swing at one of them. A search of public records and publicly available information provides several other officer responses at his address, along with more benign welfare checks, where a responding officer leaves a card to let the occupant know that they were there. To the best of my knowledge, there is no record of over 50 swatting attempts, but he has indeed been swatted more than once. What's curious is that to date, there has been no evidence, to the best of my knowledge, to back up this claim number, other than news articles about him. Those news articles echo his claims, but their source for the claim is Rick himself. 
No further fact-checking seems to have taken place, other than a few cursory checks. But whether it's once or fifty, swatting is still horrible. Which brings me back to my author, editor, and publisher friends from the science fiction community. They had each encountered Rick at various times, Gen Con, Con, Virgins, and other conventions and professional gatherings. Their reactions ranged from bemusement to annoyance. They all agreed that it was terrible that he had been swatted and harassed, and it is terrible. But they also agreed that he had the power to stop much of it from occurring. I don't want to victim blame, said one, but he seems to seek them out. He's a weird guy. Curious, I read a few news stories and checked over his social media. Sure enough, there were countless people harassing him, which is terrible. But even more curious, rather than simply blocking them, Rick engaged with them. He spent most days obsessively responding and replying to every single troll, admonishing them to enjoy a prison. Oh, I, I did that. <laughs> I misread the easiest thing to read. Enjoy prison or telling them their life is already over or that they're mentally ill and should seek help. Further, he seems to regularly check the few accounts he has blocked and replies to them as well. When people obtained his publicly available phone number and began texting him and crank calling him, rather than change the number and make it private, he engaged with them via the phone for at least a year. None of this seemed like the behavior of a man who is in fear for his life. What's happening to him is terrible. I cannot stress that enough. But, as others have said, he refuses to take even the most rudimentary steps to shield himself or his loved ones. His trolls weren't the only people he responds to. Here are a few examples of how he speaks to other people. People who are not trolls. People who are often women. Rape is the most mild punishment you deserve. Followed by execution. Uh, that was from the 18th of June, 2018. Two problems with your assumptions here. One, I don't wear underwear. Two, I come most often in your mother's, mother's basement while she's strapped to that St. Andrew's cross I made your cuck dad build as a condition for allowing him to watch me plow her asshole like a Nebraska cornfield. Um, this is from the 18th of February, 2018. Um, this is an amazing post. This is like an amalgamation of all locale traits. Ethan Ralph doesn't wear underwear. Um, he fucks your mom like boss man Jack. And the St. Andrew's cross is a bizarrely specific reference that is like dead on with Nick Ricada. Uh, just actually fucking bizarre. And then of course, um, watching is what Juju the cow does. Very interesting combination of things in one post. It's actually pretty fucking meta. <laughs> Damn, that pussy nice. <laughs> um, he continues. Yes, that is the rig I had used to fuck your mom in the ass. After several fa failed tries, I finally got it up there after hitting 35 miles per hour. 3rd of November, 2017. And then one last one for the road. I don't read comic books, you barely literate mouth breather. Tell your mom I said hello and sorry about her ass. January 17th, 2018. I know that our society seems to be fragmenting. And this is back to the original author, Mr. Uh, Brian Keane. But speaking to anyone like this, particularly women, is inexcusable. Rape is not is the most mild punishment you deserve is a repugnant thing to say to anyone. The harassment he's endured is wrong, but so is this. And keep in mind, it's being said by a guy who alleges he's being stalked by a criminal cyber cult and claims he is in fear for his life. So I wonder aloud again, has he considered maybe not barging into conversations like some hypertensive Kool-Aid man? Maybe people are reacting to that vitriol in kind. Recently, the target of his rage has been literary agent Leslie Varney. Here is a collage of the harassment he has directed at her. Uh, quoting Patrick again. Zero, you fucking idiot. You are the most savagely gullible dipshit I have ever come across. You don't understand a fucking thing and have done exactly no work. You are insane. Numerous people have no fucking idea what they're talking about, especially you. 
I'm not given a choice, dipshit. Their defamations and attacks on my reputation can't go uncorrected. Nothing the terrorists say is ever true, you fucking moron. That is exactly what they've been doing, you absolute fool. There are no backstories, you gullible simpleton. Psst, that's because you're a gullible idiot. No, you fucking idiot. I wasn't. You are a trash person. Thank goodness everyone else can see it now. Leslie blocking me isn't going to make this go away. Something different. I, I, usually when I read Pat posts, it's always like the same three or four fucking sentences. There's such a broad range of, of Pat speaking that I can do when I uh, read his Leslie tweets. He really goes all over. None of the fucking your mom, though. <laughs> there are hundreds more, says Brian, but I don't have the bandwidth in this newsletter to post screenshots of them all. But file seven seven zeros. Mike Glier, one of the most fair and dependable fandom journalists in an ex in a seemingly ever shrinking pool, comments that Rick has been privately smearing Leslie as well. Quoting him, Mike Glier says, "Brian Keane, apart from being a highly successful horror writer, has spent a lot of time reporting on his blog, no longer active, about Me Too and harassment issues in the field." Tomlinson, on the other hand, has been a victim of harassment, but he also habitually returns fire on social media and has tried to embroil me in his quarrel with Leslie Varney by feeding me claims he would not get permission to attribute to him. He is not qualified to lecture Brian on matters of conscience. Other folks have stepped forward this week with their own stories of harassment by Rick as well. None of these people are connected to the harassment he has endured. And that line is in giant, all caps, bold letters, which is a little bit out of place with how professional this guy writes. About a year ago, when I opined online that swatting sucks, and maybe he should stop engaging with people harassing him, Rick told me to reach out. So I did. I called his publicly available number, and he gave me a half hour long TED talk about the only thing or, sorry, period, about the only thing I managed to say during his pompous filibuster was, have you considered just blocking them? When this call was over, I was very much of the opinion that it's horrible Rick has been swatted and harassed, and I feel badly for his loved ones, but he seems inclined not to make, take the simplest of steps to prevent it. I was also of the opinion that he is very much the guy from those screenshots above, and he is the guy from the police report, which, to the best of my knowledge, is a publicly available document. This is a... Um, Portage Police Department report about this orderly conduct, and it says here, um, Woman's name was visually disturbed. When I asked her what had happened, she had started to cry, and we had to take a few moments to calm her down to explain the incident to me. The female was unable to explain the threats Patrick had made, or was able to explain. She did write a written statement in regards to what he said. She did state that it was just her and him having a conversation and that no one else witnessed what he had said. And then highlighted, one of the comments that Patrick made to her was that he was going to wait until um, somebody else had the baby and then kill both her and the newborn. So he threatened to murder a woman and a newborn infant baby child smother the life of a brand new little babe, innocent and naive to the world. Truly incredible malice from somebody of such esteemed conscience. According to that police report, Patrick S. Tomlinson once threatened to kill uh, his then wife and their child. Rick is mad this week because a stranger tagged me in a tweet with John Del Araz, a far right loon who I blocked years ago. Here are the screenshots. Rick's since been telling the public that I, quote, pal around with white supremacists and that I am burning books, none of which is true, but none of which is worth suing him over since he has nothing of value. Like Nicholas uh, Pacquion, Bradley Snow, and the others before him, Rick wanted my attention. I have given it to him. And later this week, when I finish up the canned food drive for the homeless shelter that Rick's recent bout of idi idiocy inspired, I'll go back to blocking and ignoring him. Maybe he should try doing that sometimes soon. Now, then he chooses to end this article in a kind of pretentious way, where he says, Former President Obama, of course, is in the habit of mailing signed books to Nazis. Um, he has received a copy of Obama's book, A Promised Land, 
uh, signed to Brian, all the best, Barack Obama. And then there's a picture of him with John Fetterman taking a selfie, uh, implying that John Fetterman would never take a selfie with a Nazi. Um, and then there's one last paragraph. Rick Tomlinson has been harassed, and that is wrong. In my opinion, rather than taking any steps to prevent further harassment, he has instead used his victim victimization to gain social clout and as a shield to harass others. He speaks terribly to women and, according to the police report, once threatened to murder his former wife and child. Those things are also wrong. When people show you who they are, believe them. I really like that quote. I've told you guys this too. When people say who... Uh, not just show, but say who they are. Like People will make jokes about what they think, but usually there's a little grain of truth there. Uh, when people say something, you should believe them. And that um, would be the end. But uh, you know how these things go. My boy Pat, or sorry, Rick, can't um, can't let someone have the last word. So here, and finally I get to break out the voice uh, for good. Um, here is the, the final word from Stealthy Geek himself on Zitter. A few days ago, File 770 posted a news update about Brian Keene and his bookstore, Vortex Books, running a promotion that amounted to a book burning of my work. This update was sorely lacking in vital context. Then, Mike Glyer made the following entirely false comment. Uh, this is him, and I've already read this. I reached out to Mike privately through avenues available to me, asking for correction. I further left a comment in the downstream thread explaining the situation. Nearly 24 hours later, my rebuttal remains awaiting moderation. So with disappointment, I'm posting it here. Uh, and then it says, message begins. Mike, there seems to be some confusion. So let me clear it up. Brian Keane has spent the better part of the last year growing increasingly close to members of the criminal, cyber-stalking, cult, harassing, threatening, impersonating, and swatting my family. Um, he was informed of the true nature of the accounts. He continues to validate and encourage by myself and others last October, but decided to double down. To the point he now uses in-jokes and slang unique to the cult. Um, this is him saying, Brian, I'm unblocking you just long enough to give you one and only one chance to get yourself out of this. Consider it a professional courtesy. The account you're engaging with is run by a criminal cyberstalker impersonating my little brother, Kyle Tomlinson, without consent. He went so far as to wish the account he knows for certain is impersonating my little brother without consent a happy new year, months after being told it was impersonating my immediate family. Um, and then this is Neutral But Kind, or from Brian King, saying, Wishing you and your family a very happy new year. I'd sign off with the author catchphrases like Stanley's Excelsior True Believers or Patty's Enjoy Prison Stalkers, but I don't have one. Regardless, have a great holiday. So he... Um, Patrick had informed him that this was a criminal cyber stalker, but yet he is continuing to treat it as if it were the real person. Shocking. Pat continues. Brian was given a wide berth. <laughs> I think, Mr. Reiterman, you're using the word uh, berth with an E, as in, like, leeway. A wide berth is what a fat, poor sign infant is given um, by a completely blown out mother. For instance, a mother giving birth to a pig monster. That would give a wide berth. Um, but no, Brian was given a wide berth. Despite his many false attacks, he continues to accuse us of either exaggerating or faking the 50 plus swattings we've endured, despite being shown fact checked. National news reporting, confirming every aspect of our experience. His answer to being called out for supporting the terrorist, literally trying to murder my family, was to abuse his bookstore business to stage what amounts to a book burning of my work. An unacceptable, problematic, and deeply unprofessional escalation. 
Um, this is Vortex Books saying, from now until 831, bring your Patrick Tomlinson books to Vortex Books and Comics for recycling, and we'll give you store credit equal to the cover price. For each book, we'll donate a can of food to the local shelter, inspired by Mr. Tomlinson's ill-advised burst of manic vitriol yesterday. Which is a bit fucking petty, if I'm going to be real with you. Um, but he continues, as for virtually Leslie, I have never had any quarrel with her. Bro, what the fuck? I'm like... <laughs> I can read these fucking comments, bro. I did. You definitely have some kind of fucking quarrel with her. Um, indeed, I never knew she existed until last year when she, like Brian, started fraternizing with the criminals swatting my family. Validating their attacks, amplifying the gaslighting, and making defamatory claims against me, including I vandalized my own property, called in a bomb threat to convention I was attending, swatted my own home, and falsely accusing me of plagiarism. The worst of all, for being real here. He is a writer, after all. Screenshots not present in the original message. I approve of all these ac false accusations made by Varney. I have never made any false accusations against or about her, and only ever responded to her direct attacks and harassment. She is not being harassed. She is the abuser. And I never, at any point, said you or anyone else couldn't attribute these statements to me. In fact, after this, I formally and publicly request that you do exactly that in the future article, complete with screenshots. Oh, so that's the entire message. I thought that that ended a few uh, messages ago, but no, I was reading the comment that is awaiting approval on his blog. Uh, so he continues. So that's where I'm at. Once again, I'm forced to clean up the mess left over by other professionals in my industry who have embraced abusers and boosted their false narratives rather than confront them. I should really, it should really be easy for everyone to say criminally terrorizing innocent people is bad. For whatever reason, Brian King, Leslie Varney, and now Mike Lyre just can't manage it. I feel very sorry to say it, but I can no longer recommend File 770 as a neutral, objective source. Of genre news. 13 out of 13. <laughs> I think this is the most... Like, I, 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 I feel like this is the most I've had a Pat post in a long time. I don't think he usually writes this much. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I know he writes books, but I'm pretty sure it's been a long time since he wrote anything long for him. It's usually just like single sentence like replies to retard bullshit on the internet. It's kind of weird to have to like, actually do like a long form reading of him. Fascinating. Thank you, Patrick. See you soon, stalker. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.